Finally, the Odysseus spacecraft sent back new pictures of the moon that it took while landing in a perilous way. It was the first lander made in the US to reach the moon since the last Apollo mission. In this video, we will show you some amazing images of the lander's descent and landing and explain what they tell us about the lander's condition and location. We will also discuss what we can learn from its successes and failures. If you are interested, then stay tuned and watch this video until the end. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates and news on lunar exploration. The Odysseus Lunar Lander, also known as Nova C, was launched by a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on February 15, 2024, and landed near the lunar south pole on February 22, 2024. It was the first spacecraft to use Methalox propulsion to navigate between the Earth and the Moon, and it carried six NASA science payloads. The mission was to demonstrate the capability of a commercial lunar lander, and to perform scientific experiments and measurements on the lunar surface. However, the lander's descent and landing were not smooth and easy. It had to deal with several challenges and difficulties, such as avoiding hazards, adjusting its trajectory, and controlling its speed and orientation. It successfully landed on the moon, but not in the way it was planned. The lander ended up on its side, hampering communications with Earth and leading to an earlier end to its runtime on the moon. Moreover, it landed less than a mile from its planned landing site, which was a flat and smooth area near the rim of a crater called Shackleton. The landing site was chosen because it was close to the lunar south pole, where there is potential for water ice and other resources that could support future human missions. The first image was taken by the lander's camera, which was mounted on the top of the lander and pointed downward. It shows the lander's shadow and the plume of dust created by its engine as it was about to touch down. It also shows the rough and rugged terrain that the lander had to avoid and the contrast between the dark and bright areas of the moon. The image was taken at an altitude of about 50 meters and it has a resolution of about five centimeters per pixel. It was transmitted to Earth shortly after the landing and it was the first image from the lunar surface that the lander sent back. In another image shared by Intuitive Machines on Monday, the company said the spacecraft has delivered shots of its descent into the Malapur A region of the moon, which lies near the lunar south pole. The third image was taken by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which is a spacecraft that has been orbiting the moon since 2009 and mapping its surface in high resolution. The image shows the lander after it landed on its side, with an arrow pointing to it. It was taken at an altitude of about 100 kilometers and it has a resolution of about one meter per pixel. The Odysseus lunar lander may have landed on the moon, but its mission is not over yet. The lander still has some data and information to send back to Earth, and maybe some experiments and measurements to perform on the lunar surface if possible. However, the lander's operation and communication are not easy and constant. It has to face some difficulties and limitations, such as the harsh and variable environment of the moon and the limited power and bandwidth of its systems. One of these challenges that will affect its survival and functionality is the sun outage. This is a phenomenon that occurs when the sun passes behind the moon, blocking the communication between the lander and the Earth. It happens twice a year around the equinoxes and it lasts for about two weeks. During this time, the lander cannot send or receive any signals or commands from the Earth, and it has to rely on its own internal battery and memory. This also affects the lander's solar panels, which are the main source of power for the lander. Without the sun, the lander's battery will drain quickly, and the lander's systems will shut down gradually. This phenomenon is expected to start on March 4, 2024, and end on March 18, 2024. This means that the lander has only a few days left to communicate and operate on the moon before it goes into a long and silent sleep. The team is trying to make the most of this time and to send as much data and information as possible to the Earth and to perform as many experiments and measurements as possible on the lunar surface. They are also trying to optimize the lander's power and bandwidth and to prepare the lander for the sun outage and the possible mission end. 
These failures and problems are not only disappointing and frustrating, but also informative and instructive. Let's go through some of the possible solutions or alternatives for avoiding or mitigating these failures and problems in future missions. Using different landing sites, trajectories, engines, or landing legs. Future lunar landers could explore different landing sites. They could also use different trajectories, such as a more vertical or horizontal approach, to avoid hazards and adjust their speed and orientation. Moreover, using different engines, such as electric or hybrid propulsion, will help to reduce the plume of dust and fuel consumption. They could also use different landing legs, such as foldable or retractable legs, to increase the stability and flexibility of the lander. The second solution is to use more sensors, cameras, or satellites, such as radar, LIDAR, or infrared, to measure and map the lunar surface in more detail and accuracy. Finally, they can use more backup and contingency systems, such as robot arms or rovers. These solutions will increase the safety and survivability of the lander. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. We also hope you share your thoughts and opinions on the lander and its mission, and the future of lunar exploration. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates and news on lunar exploration. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.